سر خواجہ ناظم الدین واز اے پاکستانی پولیٹیشین اینڈ اسٹیٹس مین ہاؤ سرڈ ایز دا سیکنڈ گورنر جنرل آف پاکستان فرام نائنٹین فورٹی ایٹ ٹو نائنٹین ففٹی ون اینڈ لیٹر ایز دا سیکنڈ پرائم منسٹر آف پاکستان فرام نائنٹین ففٹی ون ٹو نائنٹین ففٹی تھری ہی واز ون آف دا لیڈنگ فاؤنڈنگ فادرز آف پاکستان اینڈ دا فرسٹ بنگالی ٹو ہیو گورنڈ پاکستان پبلک سروسز اینڈ انڈیپینڈنس موومنٹ ناظم الدین ریٹرن ٹو انڈیا ٹو جوائن ہز بردر خواجہ صاحب الدین فرام انگلینڈ ٹیکنگ انٹرسٹ ان سول اینڈ پبلک افیئرز دیٹ لیڈ ہم ٹو جوائن دا بنگالی پولیٹکس بوتھ بردر جوائن دا مسلم لیگ اینڈ ناظم الدین سکسیزفلی رن فار دا میونسپیلٹی الیکشن اینڈ الیکٹیڈ ایز چیئرمین آف ڈھاکہ میونسپیلٹی فرام نائنٹین ٹوینٹی ٹو انٹل نائنٹین ٹوینٹی نائن During this time, he was appointed as Education Minister of Bengal. He remained Minister of Education till 1934. Later, he was appointed the Invice Rise Executive Council in 1934, which he served until 1937. In the former capacity, he successfully piloted the Compulsory Primary Education Bill, removing disparity that existed in education between the Hindus and the Muslims. As Minister for Agriculture in 1935, he piloted the Agriculture Debaters Bill and the Bengal Rural Development Bill, which freed poor Muslim cultivators from the clutches of Hindu moneylenders. He participated in regional elections held in 1937 on a Muslim League's platform but conceded his defeat in favor of Fazle Haq of Krishak Praja Party. He was appointed as Prime Minister of Bengal while, uh, while assuming his personal role as member of the Legislative Assembly. In the India Office Records, Political and Secret Department Records category, one comes across the fortnightly report to the Viceroy by the Governor of Punjab, Sir Evan Jenkins. According to this report, when inquired, About the Pakistan project, Khwaja Nazimuddin candidly told him that he did not know what Pakistan means and that nobody the Muslim League knew. This remark clearly shows that so few as six months before the creation of Pakistan, even senior Muslim League leaders had no clarity as to the basic features of the state they were asking for. ہوم اینڈ پرائم منسٹر آف بنگال اینڈ چیف منسٹر آف ایسٹ پاکستان اپون دا فارمیشن آف دا کولیشن گورنمنٹ ان این ایگریمنٹ فیسیلیٹیڈ بیٹ ون مسلم لیگ اینڈ دا کرشک پراجا پارٹی ناظم الدین واز اپوائنٹڈ ایز دا ہوم منسٹر انڈر حق سپریمیر شپ وچ ہی کنٹینیوڈ انٹل نائنٹین فورٹی تھری ڈیو ٹو ہز کنزرویٹیو ایلیٹ پوزیشن He became close associate of Muhammad Ali Jinnah, then president of the Muslim League, who appointed him as a member of the executive committee to successfully promote Muslim League's party agenda and program that gained popularity in East Bengal. In 1940-41, Nazim Udin broke away from the coalition led by Premier Fazlul Haq and decided to become a leader of the opposition. Leading campaign against Haq's premiership and primarily focus on Bengali nationalism issues. In 1943, Nazim Uddin took over the government from Premier Haq and when the latter was dismissed by the governor John Herbert, aimed controversies surrounding in his political campaigns. During this time, Nazim Uddin played a crucial political role for the cause for the separate Muslim homeland Pakistan. About his role, he was asked about the Pakistan question by British Governor Richard Casey in 1945, but he showed very little and no interest in discussing the existing of the movement and reportedly quoting. He did not know what Pakistan means and nobody in Muslim League knew. His premiership lasted until 1945 when a motion of no confidence and faced with defeat in the assembly hall by 
160-97 votes that effectively ended his premiership. He relinquished the office to Nasser Ali, an Indian nationalist Muslim and a prominent member of Congress party, or the Speaker of the Assembly, but the administration was taken over by Hussain Shahid Sohrawardi. From 1945 to 1947, Azmuddin continued to be served as the chairman of the Muslim League in Bengal, ardently supporting the political cause for Pakistan against the Congress party. During this time, he had been in brief conflict with Premier Sohra Vardhi and strongly opposed the United Bengal movement and led a strong parliamentary opposition in the assembly against Sohra Vardhi's administration in April 1947. The conflict between two men mainly existed because Sohra Vardhi had represented the middle class while Nazimuddin was representing the aristocracy in the assembly. In 1947, he gained contested in the party election in the Muslim League against Suhravati's platform and securing his nomination as the party chairman for the Muslim League's East Bengal chapter. His success in the party election eventually led him to be appointed as the first chief minister of East Bengal after the partition of India in 1947 and effectively gained control of the Muslim League in the province. As a chief minister, he led the motion of confidence that ultimately voted in favor of joining the Federation of Pakistan and reorganized the government of West Pakistan by delegating conservative members in his administration. Khwaja Nazimuddin and his role as Governor General of Pakistan from 1948 to 1951. On 14 August of 1947, Governor General Muhammad Ali Jinnah relinquished the party presidency of the Pakistan Muslim League to Sir Khwaja Nazimuddin, who took over the party of the President of Pakistan Muslim League due to his party electoral performance. On 1 November 1947, he was appointed as acting Governor General in the absence of Governor General Jinnah due to worsening health and eventually appointed as Governor General after passing of Muhammad Ali Jinnah in a crucial support provided by Prime Minister Liaquat Ali Khan on 14 September 1948 to Nazimuddin. His oath of office was supervised by Chief Justice Sir Abdul Rashid of the Federal Court of Pakistan in attendance with Prime Minister Liaquat Ali Khan. As Governor General Nazimuddin set up President of Neutrality and Non-Interference in the Government and provided his political support to Prime Minister Liaquat Ali Khan Government which was seen as essential to the working of the responsible government at that time. His role as Governor General reflected a conservative mindset and he spoke against secularism in the country. I do not agree that religion is a private affair of the individual nor to do I agree that in an Islamic state every citizen has identical rights, no matter what his caste, creed or faith be? He said. In 1949, Governor Jan Nazimuddin established a parliamentary committee, the Basic Principles Committee on the advice of Prime Minister Liaquat Ali Khan to underline basic principles that would lead Foundation of Constitution of Pakistan. In 1950, Nazimuddin released an official policy statement and declared that Pakistan would remain incomplete until the whole of Kashmir is liberated. Premiership of Liaquat Ali Khan 1951-1953 After the assassination of Liaquat Ali Khan in 1951, the Muslim League leaders asked Governor General Nazimuddin to take over the business of the government as well as the party's presidency, as there was no other person found suitable for the post. He appointed Finance Minister Sir Malak Ghulam to the Governor General's post. Nazimuddin's government focused towards promoting the political programs aimed toward conservative ideas. During his time in office, a framework was begun for a constitution that would allow Pakistan to become a republic and end its British dominion status under the crown. 
Nazimuddin administration took a place during a poor economy and the rise of provincial nationalism in four provinces and East Bengal, which made him unable to run the country's affairs effectively. By 1951-52, the Muslim League had split into two different factions dominated by the Bengali chapter and Punjab Sindhi chapter. As those were the two largest ethnic demographic and but were separated by India. In 1951, Prime Minister Nazimuddin's government conducted the country's first nationwide consensus where it was noted that 57% of the population of Karachi were refugees from India, which further complicated the situation in the country. In January 1952, Prime Minister Nazimuddin publicly announced in Dhaka's meeting that Jinnah had been right for the sake of Pakistan's national unity. Urdu must be the official language of Pakistan, East and West. On 21 February 1952, a demonstration in the Bengali League language movement demanding equal and official status to the Bengali language turned bloody. With many fatalities caused by police firings, this demonstration was held when he declared Urdu the natural language of Pakistan following the previous statement of Muhammad Ali Jinnah that Urdu shall be one and only language of Pakistan. In 1953, a violent religious movement led by far-right jamaat e islami began to agitate for the removal of the Ahmadi religious minority from power positions and demanded a declaration of this minority as non-Muslims. Nazimuddin was held morally responsible for riots being spread and resisted such pressures. But mass rioting broke out in Punjab against both the government and followers of this religious minority. Prime Minister Nazimuddin responded to the violence by dismissing the Chief Minister of Punjab, Mamtaz Daltana, to Feroz Khan, but the decision came late. He declared martial law with approval coming from Governor General Malik Ghulam and enforced through Lieutenant General Azam Khan, who successfully quelled the agitation. The agitations and violence spread throughout the Punjab, and the another factor was the Bengali language movement. And riots in Lahore proved the inability of Nazimuddin's government as he was widely seen as weak in running the government administration. In a view of attempting to improve the economy and internal security, Malo Ghulam asked Prime Minister Nazimuddin to step down in the wider interest of the country. Nazimuddin refused to oblige and Mullah Ghulam used reserve powers granted in the Government of India Act 1935 dismissed Nazimuddin. Nazimuddin then requested the Federal Court of Pakistan intervention against this action but the Chief Justice Mohammad Munir did not rule on the legality of the dismissal but instead forced a new election to be held in 1954. Malo Ghulam appointed another Bengali politician, Muhammad Ali Bogra, who was then tenuring as the Pakistan ambassador to the United States. As the new prime minister until the new election to be held in 1954, the dismissal of Sir Khwaja Nazimuddin's administration of prime minister by the governor general Sir Malo Ghulam Hammer signaled a troubling trend in political history of the country. Later life of Sir Khwaja Nazimuddin, even after his dismissal, he and his family remained active in parliamentary politics. His nephew Khwaja Vasiuddin, an army general serving as GOC in the Corps and later repatriated to Bangladesh in 1974. His young brother Sahabuddin remained active in the politics and eventually ascended as information minister in the President Ayub Khan's administration. Sir Khwaja died in 1964, aged 70. He was buried in the Muslim, Muslim of three leaders in his hometown of Dhaka.
Nazimuddin and his brother Sahabuddin belonged to an aristocratic family who were known for their wealth in theses written by Joy Chatterjee. Nazimuddin was described for unquestionable loyalty to British administration. It was the story of second Prime Minister and second Governor General of Pakistan.